All right, g'day team. Uh, we are ready for the SSW Tech News and uh, welcome to everyone uh, here and remote. Our uh, live audience is small and our remote audience is greater. Uh, but hopefully that will change because I really miss you guys. Um, it's uh, not as easy doing it without uh, all the loudmouths around. So what's the biggest news of the month in uh, October 2021? Well, it's enormous news. And I'm guessing you all know the news. And it's .NET 6. And .NET 6, the release candidate 2 is here. Uh, we, uh, we thought it was good before the release candidate 2. And it's almost uh, RTM or... Uh, uh, released to uh, the web, and now we have a go live license, and there's heaps of goodness in there. Like, I'm not sure which bits you guys care most about, but there's so much. Obviously, the Maui stuff is stuff people care about, but you know, there's lots of people just doing web APIs, and uh, they'll be excited with uh, many of the performance improvements. To, to recap, .NET 5 was great. You know, they, they pulled it all, mashed it all together, they gave us .NET 5. Um, which you know, solidified us off different versions of .NET, and we were happy about that. Um, but, of course, when you do all that, you've got some cleaning up to do, and they've done some cleaning up. So this one is the one that you really care about because, there's a few reasons, enterprises care about this one only because it has LTS, long-term support. Um, I guess startups will like it because it's simpler, and uh, other guys will like it because it's faster. So uh, what else do we have here? Global usings. Uh, this is great because instead of putting, you know, uh, this, you know how we put usings in every single class, you, you will, can just put it once now and it's everywhere. So this follows the don't repeat yourself, the dry principle. Uh, it's also a little like uh, Blazor projects, which have the underscore imports and you reference it once. This is uh, just like that. So this is cool. It's just cleaner, less code. Everything with less code is better. Um, and we've got file scope, namespace declarations. You may care, may not. See, instead of three lines, we're now one line with curly braces. And actually, in addition, you're going to have one less level of indentation in your code if you care about stuff like that. Uh, oh, look, there's, there's heaps of cool stuff here. I don't know which stuff you'll care about, but this is a good one. Web templates. Here we go. Now, we've always had program and startup. Now, we only have program. So, uh, you know, it'll look a little bit different. Um, you know, you can see var app equals builder.build. Uh, but in general, uh, I can't, you, you'll go file new project, you know, .NET 6, you will not have a startup and I don't think you'll bother with that again. So that should be good. And what else have we got? You know, this keep, it's on and on and on. And uh, everyone has different things. And uh, oh, we, we have Mac OS support that is coming. Um, it's not in this one, but it's coming in the next one. And uh, we'll talk in a sec why that's super important, because uh, a whole bunch of devs here are moving to MacBooks. What's the next big news? The next big news is the GitHub advisory database is now, um, it now powers NPM audit. And this is uh, a friend of mine, uh, Ed Thompson. He, uh, he's announced this, you can read about it. But essentially, the uh, NPM organization joined GitHub. That meant that we ended up with two different databases and they've combined those databases. Uh, the way we do it here at SSW, and uh, I think it's a fairly good way of working, but each sprint review, we uh, run NPM outdated just to make sure the product owner is aware of the technical debt. Uh, so that is a good way of working, I think. Every, you can't keep up to date with this, uh, you know, with all these packages, but uh, if you do add a new package, I think that's a good time to update them. But there's another piece that we do, and that's called NPM audit. So now, you know, you'll just carry on like you've always been carrying on, but you've got a database that's um, uh, being run by the GitHub uh, community. So another piece of news, we have GitHub Enterprise Server 3.2. At SSW, we typically don't 
do it this way, but large enterprises might want to look after their own uh, GitHub server, you know, do all the, Git, all the you know, care and feeding of that particular server, and so this matters to them. Open source projects are getting more love from Microsoft. We have Azure credits for open source projects. Uh, this is good, and obviously, like, you know, uh, if you're running an open source project, you can now just use a bit of Azure. So you could run all your load tests for the test environments or you know, lots of different things until you hit that limit. And I'm sure over time that limit's going to uh, change, probably get more and more generous over time. And uh, so just start using what you've got and you know, uh, see how that works for you. I really like this. One of the young guys here pointed this out and I was pretty impressed because when I first saw it, I thought that's a bit unusual for a .NET dev to be telling me about SQL Server temporal tables. Uh, it seemed like a DBA type thing. And then uh, in Entity Framework Core 6. So look, for some people, this is actually going to be the best news of the night. You know when you look at a record in a database and you go, you know, a user is looking, who changed this? What happened? Who screwed this record up? You know, or who clobbered that? Uh, we would then get told by the product owner to make sure we have auditing. And then you'd go to SQL Server, you might create another table, uh, you might then go and do a whole lot of, uh, uh, you know, put some triggers on, like uh, an update trigger or a delete trigger, um, and uh, then kind of look after these history tables. Well, we've got a better story now. Uh, these temporal tables, uh, you can just essentially, with the creation of these temporal tables with Entity Framework core migrations, you are sorted. So uh, what this does is under the cover creates those tables. Now, actually I should be more specific, it's the same table, they just put this in these uh, history records underneath it. So that's, um, that's super cool, that magic is kind of done for you, and then how do you get to them? Well. Uh, the story is here about how to get to them. Um, you, when you're doing a normal link statement, you will then add this if you want to look at the history underneath the records, the temporal between and the dates, and then uh, you will order by and here we have the period start. So uh, this, this is the way it's done. I think it's pretty spectacular. Obviously that's going to order by ascending, if you wanted that order by, and you want to see the most recent changes, who last clobbered it, you would have order by descending. So, uh, that, there we go. Um, that's pretty cool, I think. What is the next big news? Well, I don't think you're a real developer if you haven't installed uh, Windows 11. Uh, you most, I'd say almost all the devs now have installed Windows 11. It's really uh, not as massive as some prior versions of Windows. And, uh, you know, uh, if you don't have the hardware, then you need a new PC. So uh, that is uh, a good story there. And Microsoft have also um, made sure that we can get rid of our passwords. So you can go into that Microsoft Authenticator app, go into settings and, and get rid of your password forever if uh, you care. I haven't done this. Uh, I am, uh, I'm going to wait a little while. I'm just, uh, I find it a big change. Uh, and, but I'll see. I'm very interested to hear what you guys say. Uh, and maybe put in the comments what you guys think of this feature. Now, uh, I think that is the majority of the news. Um, I certainly have, uh, here in Australia, we have had massive lockdowns for many months. And, uh, they have, for the very first time in history, made the big exam in New South Wales, the HSC, uh, a month later. They've never done that before. And uh, I have a kid doing that exam and talking to lots of kids what's, how they're coping. Uh, lockdown has been hard for uh, most, most students because uh, they haven't had teachers for months and months. Uh, but for some kids that are very good at studying by themselves, uh, they've, they've matured, they're getting a whole extra month to be able to study more. Like if you think about those hard days just before the big exam, another month is a lot. 
if you're a kid that can't study, then you have more trouble. Now, uh, what has exacerbated this is teachers that could teach in person uh, couldn't teach online. And that is going to be a big skill set that teachers are going to have to learn, not just how to teach in person, but online and teach well. Uh, some of the best schools here in Australia, you know, uh, Sydney Grammar, for example, their, their, their uh, core tenet was we don't have computers and we teach the old school way. And then they get locked down and they were completely screwed. And, um, you know, uh, we are probably going to see the biggest difference between low marks and high marks uh, with this HSC. And, you know, where a lot of us are doing interviews with uh, young candidates. And this is going to be really interesting what happens in, in these exams this month and uh, how it impacts all the, all the kids. Anyway, let's move on to some hardware news because for some of the guys, this is the most interesting part. MacBook Pro 2021. Now, some people think that these are cool because they look cool. Other th people think they're cool because they've got extra ports. Uh, and developers think they're cool because they're fast. And when I say fast, you know, the, um, the M1s were fast. The M1 uh, Pros and the M1 Maxes are super fast. And when I say fast, have a look at this graph. Um, here, you know, that's the M1. That was fast. And all the guys were, were raving about that. Now, look at this performance. Uh, this is a lot of extra performance. We're talking about 70% faster CPUs. And if you're talking about graphics, they're talking about 100% faster. So double the speed. That is a pretty friggin' phenomenal. That is amazing. Um, and uh, just physically, the chip that goes inside, if you're interested, that is the M1, the very fast M1 chip. This is the M1 Pro, and here's the M1 Max. Like, they're physically bigger chips, and uh, that's, that's pretty awesome. So I can imagine that there's going to be uh, quite a few devs that switch onto this that weren't even MacBook users. Now, this is the big conference that's coming up. You will probably want to attend this. This is going to be awesome. So we have a whole bunch of uh, events down here, which is pretty cool. You can attend those. I think that's all from me. You're going to have a great session now from Jason Taylor. who will be talking about modern web dev. If you have any comments, uh, about missing news that I missed this month, put it down in the comments. If you think that you've got a good story on any of the particular news or what your favorite .NET 6 feature is or whatever, throw it down there, share it with the community so we all get uh, smarter. And I will see you next month for the SSW Tech News.